Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today's viewer requested question is actually quite a giggly exciting one, which is good. It's from Andrew Tulik, uh, four hours ago. Can you do a tutorial on the flankers super maneuverability? So let's talk about the flankers super maneuverability. What I think he means is not its standard in envelope maneuverability. I think he means out of envelope maneuverability. When you basically press the S, the Sierra key on your keyboard, it overrides the augmentation slash fly by wire of the pitch control and allows you to pull massive positive or negative out of envelope angles of attack. So a standard, we will have either augmentation or fly by wire in a pitch or both. I'm not sure what it is. To be honest, it doesn't really matter for this video but what you've got is background automated control of the pitch of this aircraft and the reason you've got that is because this aircraft is designed around the idea of static instability in the pitch it is unstable without a background augmentation slash fly by wire it couldn't fly the nose would just pitch down or pitch up all the time the moments of pitch would just be too large to control so that's all done automated we have the ability to turn that off for seconds you don't want to keep it off for a long time because your plane becomes un fully unstable so we can turn off for a few seconds we can pull back on the stick or forwards on the stick we get then full control of the elevators which you usually don't get and this will allow you to go out of envelope now what's it actually useful for on a battlefield first of all it's only going to be useful for a dogfight uh, nothing else other than showing off and doing fancy tricks but that's not tactical in this case we're going to examine and teach tactical use in ACM in a dogfight within the dogfight we have two ways of using our super maneuverability. And the first thing I should say at this point is that this is a one trick pony. You can do it once and that's it. You won't be able to do it again for, for another minute or so because it takes so much time to build up your energy again. And however you're going to use this super maneuverability, you have a massive trade off. Yes, the plane can get super maneuverability from this, i.e. it can change the pitch very quickly, but you will lose all of your kinetic energy or mo well, yeah, all of your kinetic energy as a result. Hence, it's a one trick pony. So only use it when you absolutely have to and you're sure that afterwards you are not going to need to maneuver at all we can use it either offensively or defensively so defensively it's pretty easy i'm being chased by a bad guy there's a guy on my six and i need to defend now the best way generally of defending is to force an overshoot that means get the hostile in front of you therefore you can either you can shoot at him or then you or you can turn around and run away either way that's fine what we can do is uh, do the Pugachev's Cobra maneuver which all that means is just produce a whole load of angle of attack positive angle of attack the aircraft becomes an air brake and it stops in midair very quickly and then the hostile plane presumably isn't another flanker and isn't going to do the same maneuver and therefore it won't be able to stop as quickly and therefore it'll fly forwards and then you can either egress or run away usually run away like i said after a super maneuver you don't have the ability to get back on the other guy's six we're not talking vectored thrust this is very different from vectored thrust here we don't have the ability to control our thrust it's a one-time move only one caveat to mention is that if we're going to do a cobra is be careful not to overstress the airframe yes you can do a cobra in a flanker maybe even a mig 29 i can't remember but you must not do it from such an airspeed that it puts too much uh, lever on the wings because the wings will snap off i haven't done this for so long i can't remember what it is but it's going to be around 400 knots about 700 650 kilometers an hour i imagine but we'll test it out then we've got the second way of using super maneuverability in a non-vector thrust bird which is to use it offensively and the way we would do this is for a snap turn so the idea of a snap turn is that you use the maximum turn rate you possibly can in your jet note that is not the maximum sustained turn rate if we go and look at an em chart an energy management chart we would find out that if we used our maximum turn rate then that's great but our speed would then reduce and our turn rate would get lower and lower and lower so what that means is using a snap turn maximum turn rate is a one trick pony again you can use it once and then by the end of it you're all out of airspeed you're all out of energy similar to the Pugachev's Cobra and because we have direct control of our elevators during super maneuverability therefore we can pull a massive turn rate only for a couple of seconds again the idea is to get the nose around on the target really quick for a one-time shot with an archer or an r60 or whatever or gun or a gun kill and that's it 
Um, again, after that, you've stalled, and it's going to be seconds again before you've, you can put the nose down and get some energy back in the bird. Uh, so that would be the offensive way with the Snapter. So we've got here the flanker, which is going to be my unstable aircraft. We've got the F-15 here, which is going to be the aggressor. The F-15 cannot do super maneuverability. The flanker can, obviously. And if we look at um, what allows us to do super maneuverability is its static instability. And that is the differential between the center of gravity in the longitudinal axis from the center of lift. I know there's different ways of putting that, but you know, generally speaking, that is correct. So to find the center of gravity is pretty easily you roughly go in the middle of the mass of the aircraft i know this isn't science but you get the idea the center of lift let's say it's about roughly where my mouse goes through is there the center of lift in this case is actually going to be aft of the center of gravity which is going to be you know roughly speaking the center of the the wings here something like that you can see we're a good i don't know six feet aft of the uh, center of gravity there and through physics that i don't really pretend to understand that means that it's going to be an unstable aircraft. In the cockpit now, I'm the flanker. He's in the F-15. He's going to chase me into a dogfight. I'm going to lead him in the dogfight. Now, it's very important to do this not too fast. If I do it anything above 700 clicks per hour IAS, then I'm going to snap my wings off for obvious reasons. So I've got to get the fight fairly slow, first of all. So below, certainly below 700, even below 600, ideally. So I'm going to get down low. I'm going to get into an S, uh, into scissors or something like that. Then I'm going to press the uh, the S button, which is the override. In fact, that one there, it's toggleable, so it's on or it's off. A standard, obviously, it is off. And that's going to allow me to basically stall the plane out, 90 degrees angle of attack. And he can't do that, so he is just going to do his best to keep up. He'll probably overshoot, and then I'll either get a shot on him, or more likely, I'm just going to try and escape. Are you behind me, RC? Oh, Jesus. Yep, right next to you. Let's go. Are you with me, RC? Yeah, I got him. Okay. I'm going to take him down. Speed, check the speed, and go. Massive pullback, and look at him, he cannot keep up with that. I'm now going to put control back on, and I'm going to turn around and escape. Or I could get a shot on him like that, but it's only luck, really, because he's kind of walking in front of me. speed. Okay. Should we do that again, RC? I'll say. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Let's go. I'm going to lure him in close. Try and keep off four. fast to do it let's try now control back on and now try and drop inside of him and exit the fight and I'm now basically facing the opposite way from him uh oh uh -oh. Hey, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Got me. So, so yeah. Anyway, that showed another way. Yeah, again, not perfect. I'm not much of a dogfighter, but you see how I could just gain that extra few seconds from it, and um, this time I could recover and uh, and get out. Right. Uh, next, we're going to show the offensive. So this time we're set up instead of him behind me in a defensive chase. I'm going to be offensive. We are going to merge head on here, and I'm going to use in the first circle of the turn. I'm going to use my, if you like, my Cobra ability to massively incre increase my angle of attack to get one snapshot off and try and get an archer off and that will allow me to win the dogfight. Again, it's one use only because I'm going to fall out of the sky afterwards. So just be sure uh, that you know when to do it. Again, speed check, check your IAS, no more than 650, 700. Authorized. Right, RC is locked. We're going to do our best to stick not far above 600 K IAS because we don't want to risk ripping our wings off. We're going to probably go over the top this case. It's going to be full power after the merge. ASC on for about a, two seconds. And full power. ASC. Massive snap. ASC off. There's nothing he can do to keep up with that. So all I'm going to do is drag my helmet mount display over on him. Lock. Fire. He's still turning. Launch. Get another one off. Got him. Ooh. Minimum speed. Okay, uh, let's go and try again. I'll see. Stand by. You can do it in a lateral plane as well. I'm just probably not good enough to do it. ASC on for about two seconds max. Burners will be on. Burners on. Initiate. ASC. ASC off. And there's not much he can do to get round in time. Because I'm already firing archers at him. Hobbs, obviously. 
so they can bend around and get him. Authorized. Missed. Got him. So that Minimum is. Minimum speed. I'm just gonna let that second one hit. Boom. Uh, pretty hard to fight against that, isn't it, RC? So, yeah. you see what we did there? We did that initial turn. Now, I've sacrificed everything. I've stalled out at this point. So, it's all or nothing in terms of super maneuverability. It's that one big snap and pair that up with the helmet mounted display to lock up off bore with the EO and the Hob missile, the Archer in this case, that is just going to fire from uh, 60 degrees off bore or 90 degrees off bore and uh, track him and hit him. So that's the power of super maneuverability. That's why it was invented. That's why the, we have the ability to uh, turn off the, the uh, ASC. If you're a really good flanker driver, there are other tactical purposes that you could use this for. You can technically actually increase your turn rate if you know what you're doing, sustain turn rate, and a couple of other stuff. However, that's super advanced moves, and I couldn't really show you how to do it, to be honest. So this is the main tactical use. Anything you want to add to that, RC? No, nothing to add.